So you get jumbos this week. Best eggs ever. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'm James and this is my wife, Cammie. We're the owners of Lockwood Farms in Cobble Hill, BC. We have 5,800 laying chickens. We started with three about 11, 12 years ago. So be careful, people. It's a, it's a gateway livestock. And then grew to 99 and then from there we applied for a special permit to have uh, up to 399. And it was at that point we really realized there was quite an interest in our eggs and it wasn't just mm -hmm. to supplement the veggies, but we really wanted to make a go of it. We went to uh, another farmer's place out in Yarrow. We saw that she had uh, 3,000 organic laying hens and at that point we had no concept of how that was even possible and what the hens would look like. But we went there and we were so impressed with, with her operation and how healthy her flock was. And we could also see the huge benefits of automation. Um, and how it was actually much easier to care for 3,000 birds versus yeah, there's sort of the, there, there's, <laughs> there's an economy of scale that plays yeah. in at a certain point. It actually does the opposite. You're not compromising at all the, the animal welfare. If anything, you have more tools at your disposal to offer mm -hmm. an even better uh, environment for them. We applied to BC Eggs uh, new producer program and that's what made us jump from 400 birds up to a few thousand birds. There are many different types of, of housing systems for chickens. What we have is considered a floor system, uh, a slatted floor where the birds can run around on this, this wood slat. Um, their poop falls away from them, keeps them cleaner. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have a scratch area where they can dust bathe and kick up dust into them. And we've got the, the water lines, which are quite, quite a common practice mm -hmm. of, of many, many poultry farmers, those mm -hmm. style of water lines. We use a uh, chain and trough feed system which helps uh, bring feed in and, and disperse it evenly throughout the barn so that all the birds can be comfortably feeding at the same time. We've got perch trails everywhere. You walk in the barn during the day and there's just birds all over the floor and they'll come up to you and they'll be very interested in you but then when you, when you walk in there at night and we do this because this is our life <laughs> there's no, no birds on the floor and it's just not a single one just they're just silent all and they're all just perching yeah it's really cool there's nest boxes for them to walk into with little privacy curtains and they lay their eggs there and they roll under onto a belt and that that belt helps us to collect the eggs it uh, comes out the wall and we collect from the other side Once we collect the eggs, we'll put them in the plastic flats, we'll store them in our, in our unwashed egg cooler. Mm -hmm. And we are also a licensed grader, so a couple days a week we wash and grade and you know, weigh out the eggs. And so we then will have them offered in medium, large, extra large jumbo. We grow a very wide variety of vegetables, that's where everything started. If you were to count all the individual varieties of tomatoes and lettuces and beets and everything, we would have close to 200 varieties. We feed around eight to 10,000 people on Vancouver Island. From markets, we've been able to grow and develop into wholesale, and that's, that's the vast majority of our income now. Restaurants and stuff, although that's taken quite a hit during the pandemic. It's, it's been tough to adapt. I'm sure everyone's gonna say that. But with the increasing costs of wages, Paired with the uncertainty of sales. The labor that it takes to do all this is really intensive. And when you don't have a guaranteed sale at the end of it, it's, it's, it's difficult. The climate crisis, it's here and it's real. And as farmers, we are absolutely on the front lines. And it has the potential to completely decimate our food system. But as James's t-shirt says, like, apocalypse team. I, We're a team. We feel it. <laughs> We're a team though. Yeah, yeah, we are a team. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Anything you see me throwing to one side um, doesn't even hit the compost pile necessarily, but uh, gets enjoyed by some animals first. My friend came to us and was like, why don't you have pigs? You could feed them all your off-grade eggs. We're like, that's a really great idea. We have usually three to five pigs to 
stay on top of farm waste, trimmings, uh, things that don't meet human grade. They've actually been a lot more of a waste management tool than, than we anticipated and it's been, it's been fantastic having them. So for those people out there that, that don't mind a bit of bacon, we uh, grow our bacon with eggs. I love seeing our, our customers and handing them a dozen eggs every time and opening them up and showing our customers. It's amazing to have that instant immediate customer feedback where people actually have a direct relationship with us as farmers. They know us and they trust us. We can actually look somebody in the eye and say, I grew this for you. Um, People are still surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Even at the market last week, someone said, well, you didn't grow that, did you? Yeah. yeah. And that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything. And we the meat it. too, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a relationship between us and the customers yeah. and, and the animals and the plants. 